Hey guys, welcome back. So tonight we'll be looking at this snowblower. It is a snapper snowblower, um, fairly new. It's four years old and I got it at a pretty good price, uh, mostly because it doesn't run at all. So most likely it's a fuel problem, but I'll check, you know, some of the other obvious things like, uh, do we have spark and um, gas, obviously. Uh, you know, looking this unit over, it does seem pretty, pretty good. Um, there's really no rust to speak of. I mean, it's kind of dirty. I mean, looking at these tires, I mean, they, they look brand new. And same thing for the auger assembly. You know, there's really almost no rust to speak of. So it looks pretty good. Um, you know, there are a couple issues. I mean, actually, this, now that I look at it, this auger looks like it's bent. Um, and also right here on each side, each of these kind of fold in a little bit at the bottom. So, you know, I'll take a look at that maybe toward the end, you know, assuming everything else is good and see if I can do anything to straighten that stuff up. Did check the oil. It was clear, clean and full. And I checked for compression, and compression seems pretty good. So, um, you know, before digging in too far to the carburetor, I do just want to check for spark. And if that checks out, then I will most likely pull the carburetor. Um, I did cheat and take a look in here before buying. And I did see a lot of white stuff you know, powdery stuff. Um, it actually doesn't look too bad, but you know, I do want to get that out of there. And I suspect the carburetor probably has a lot more of that stuff in it, which is why it's not running. So in order to check spark, the spark plug's actually buried under this, this tin here or plastic, whatever it is. So I'm going to set you up on a stand and we're going to dig into that and get that cover off which will expose the spark plug and the carburetor and um and see what we got Okay, so I just got to unplug the primer bulb hose. <clears throat> and this here is the kill switch. So <clears throat> there are two wires running up there. Okay. Okay, so spark is good. Uh, next, we gotta take this plate off here and that'll expose the front of the carburetor so we can get the screws out and get the carburetor off of the engine. So this here is the air filter. Um, Snowblower is really uh, don't have air filters because there is no dust or bugs or debris really floating around in the winter time. At least that's how they justify not putting an air filter on it. I can see, I don't know if you can see this, but I see white powder kind of raining down as I unscrew here. So I think this is going to be a complete disaster inside. Oh, yeah, what is that? white powder everywhere 
Yeah, so even on the intake, there's lots of powder. I don't know what this is. But seeing it up this high is not good. Usually that stuff is um, confined to in here. And of course, a lot of the passageways are on the top end. So, you know, I'll try cleaning this up, but if those passageways have that stuff in it, I'm not sure how well this is gonna come back. That's shocking. It's not too bad inside here. I mean, the gas smells terrible, but I was really expecting this to be a bunch of white powder. I should have probably caught this fuel coming out this looks a lot like water. Okay, so this is not at all what I was expecting to see. I mean, this bowl looks great. The needle looks great. Float looks great. Main jet might be clogged. It's hard to tell on these. So I'm going to insert a wire in there and see if there's a blockage. Um, from the side here, I can see that it's not blocked. But here is where the where the gas goes into the emulsion tube. I think on this guy, the, the more immediate problem is these air passages are completely blocked. At least that one is, and that one probably is. And there's a lot of rust on this side. And this is where you have the pilot circuit holes over here. So those might be hopelessly rusted out. Actually, the emulsion tube looks like it can be unscrewed, so let me remove that. Yeah, there's a lot of um, fine particles on here, and the holes actually do look pretty clogged up, so I'll have to take a wire to those as well and make sure they're clear. Oh, God. Been saying that a lot tonight. That is supposed to be a clear hole through there. And it's clogged completely.
Actually, that wasn't rust. This cleaned up really well. I'm kind of shocked. Wow. So what I'm going to do now is just try to clean these little holes here on the side. Uh, this is part of the, the idle circuit or the pilot circuit. Um, I'm shocked at how well this cleaned up. So I actually think this is going to come back. Okay, all the residue has been washed off and I used an air compressor to just blow it dry. So let's get this thing back together. Okay, good. So I'm going to turn my attention now to the gas tank and uh, see what I can do about that. All right, so before disconnecting this tank, I am going to just blast it with some air and see if I can knock some of that stuff loose. And then once I have it off, I'll probably start with maybe some water, shake it around. And if that doesn't work, I'll probably step up to the degreaser that I used to clean the carburetor. And if that doesn't work, I might use gas or acetone and um, see if I can't get the majority of this white stuff off. Okay, so to remove the tank, these two screws need to come out, and potentially, uh, I think there's a couple more on the other side, but I'll start with these and see if we need to do any more. Okay, so just to show you here, this is the sticker I was talking about. Actually, I didn't realize it was a sticker. I thought it was a plug, which hides where the fuel shutoff could be, which is an optional feature, apparently. Um, this, too, is also optional throttle control, so this machine is just going to run at full throttle. Um, I do have a connector like this, which is a Briggs & Stratton-style connector, so I think the way it works is it'll just go through like that and see there's a cutout right there for the line to go out over to the carburetor so yeah I think when I put it back together I'm gonna try to put this in 
you know, I think it's kind of essential if you want to save your carburetor. This is what it looks like after being blown out. Uh, a lot of stuff did come out, but obviously uh, there's still a bit that remains. It's not on there very well, so I'm hoping if I just put some water and shake it, that might get a majority of it. Okay, so this is the end result. Uh, it's almost dry, still a little water down there, but you know, I just ran hot water through it for a little while. I put some of that degreaser in it, shook it a bit, and repeated that many times. So you can see it's not perfect. I mean, there's still a little bit here on the sides, you know, but overall, this is a, a big improvement over what it was. So uh, this should be fine. You know, when I put gas in it, hopefully what's left here will just dissolve and not cause any additional carburetor problems but um, you know overall I think this results pretty good Okay, so I got the new fuel lines on and the valve, so I'm just going to bolt everything back up, you know, the fuel tank, the surrounds, and just see how everything fits, and if that looks good, then I'll proceed with the carburetor installation. Okay, while I'm over here, I'm just gonna clean up these wires. I'm guessing someone cut off a zip tie because this can't be factory dragging in the wheels and these things are kind of close too. Okay, now I just got to cut this new hose to size and put that on. 
uh, debating whether to put these tins on or not. It's only held on by a few screws. Um, you know, I guess I need to for the kill switch. So uh, let's get that done. Okay, just gonna put a little bit of gas in there and make sure we have no leaks. All right, see no drippy drippies. I think we're good. Of course, I'm sure once I get the cover on, things could change. didn't notice it. So, it has to come apart again. I'm guessing the float was just stuck because, I mean, that's shut off. That's open. There we go. All right, so that does it for now. Fuel tanks, all set. New hoses, new valve. All this is back on. Choke is installed, no longer flooding. We should be good for contact. So it's a little bit late right now. So in the morning, I'm gonna bring this outside, turn you back on and see what we got. All right, let's see if this thing starts. Okay, good. Um, seems like everything works. It is slightly lean. You know, if I choke it a little bit, it smooths out. Um, I'm not sure there's much I can do about this. The jets are not adjustable. So I think 
this will have to do. See that? It's still flooding over, so I do need to take that needle out and uh, reinspect it. Also, I did not clean the seat off, and it's quite possible some of those um, that white powdery crystal stuff is in the seat. So let me pop that floating needle out, inspect those, clean them if necessary, and I will take a Q-tip to the seat and see if that can fix it. Otherwise, we might just have to buy a new needle. Okay, well, I've tried a few more times off camera to get this thing to stop leaking, and it just won't. You know, it seems like everything's fine. I run it, shut it down, and about a minute later, it just starts leaking. And it's not like a small leak. It's like the float is completely stuck open. Um, I'm not sure what would be causing that. You know, I, I tried, you know, cleaning the this needle, obviously, and cleaning the seat. I had another carburetor with the same needle and same float setup that was brand new, never used. So I pulled it off of this carb, threw it on, same exact symptoms. Um, you know, I then thought, well, okay, maybe the fuel tank is inventing properly. So the last time I did it, I ran it with the cap, gas cap loose, um, same thing. You know, so there's no pressure buildup in the tank pushing the pushing its way down and forcing the needle open. Um, so I'm really out of ideas here. Uh, you know, so I, I don't know what could be causing this, but it's it's not like it's a slow leak. It's a big leak. And I've thought of different things, like maybe the, the gas is boiling in the fuel line. But, you know, why would it... If that were the case, the pressure would just relieve through the gas tank vent. Um, and the carburetor really isn't on the top of the engine where most of the heat is going. It's kind of down a bit, so I really don't see that as being an issue. Um, when I was looking at the seat the other night, I actually thought I did see some minor imperfections, but I can't really see them tonight. You know, as far as I'm concerned, it looks good if i could zoom in a little more maybe i could identify a problem but you know the fact that it doesn't leak when it's cold and does when it's hot makes no sense to me it tells me that it's has to be heat related how i don't know so the new carburetor i ordered would be here in about a week confidence is pretty low that it's gonna run properly. But this one was still running a bit lean. I think there are some passages that aren't quite right given the condition that it was in. So a new carburetor probably isn't a bad thing for this, but I'll be very disappointed if it does the same thing as this. So uh, stay tuned. And in about a week, I will hopefully add on the success clip. Okay, so something showed up today. New carburetor on the right, old on the left. So anyway, they look pretty much like a match. I mean, there are some minor differences. Uh, the big thing is though, it doesn't come with the throttle, not throttle, choke extension. So that just has to be moved over onto the new carb.
All right, let's get this thing installed and see if everything's fixed. All right, so the new carb is installed. No flooding yet. So I'm gonna start it and run it for about 10 minutes and shut it down and see what happens. Um, I'm looking for two things here. One is, is it no longer running lean? And more importantly, to me anyway, is, uh, is it still flooding over? So uh, let's get this thing started and see what happens. Okay, so you'll probably be able to hear it when I get closer, but the engine's running a lot better with this new carburetor. It's not running lean anymore. So it's been about 10 minutes. I'm gonna go shut it down and see if it overflows. Okay, so the engine sounded much better. I also noticed too, with the old carburetor, when you shut the engine down, there was always a backfire. When I shut it down this time, there was no backfire. So a definitely a noticeable improvement on the way the engine runs. It's no longer lean, no backfiring when shutting down. Also, it's been off for at least three or four minutes now. And there is no flooding. So, not quite sure what was wrong with the other carburetor, but that top end was pretty goobered up. So, I have a pretty cheap ultrasonic. Usually brings back the carburetors, but, you know, in this case, uh, it wasn't able to do so. So, anyway, we're able to save the snowblower. I hope this helps someone. Thanks for watching.